Welcome back to another tutorial on C++. This is going to be tutorial 14. I'm going to talk about vectors and lists. I figured I'd just combine this in the same one because they are somewhat similar but have a few important differences. So last time we talked about arrays and that's sort of the, that's, that's say the old style, the old C style, but with C++ we were introduced to, to some new, new libraries. Now this is old news to anyone who's my C++, but as a new programmer, you'll want to know about this. What you can do is you can include vector, and basically this is just, it's about the same as an array, except it's easier to work with, and it has some pre-built functions. Now, once you get a little used to this, I'd recommend he heading on over to this website and just taking a look at, at vectors, and it's part of the standard library, and it's from the header vector. So it has a lot of the main stuff you'll want to do when you're storing data. So if you if you have a list of data, you're either going to generally in C++ you're going to store it in a vector or a list if it might change or be modular. If it's always going to be the same, that's when you use those arrays. So let's just uh do some new stuff here with vectors. So if you want to do the same data but as a vector, you would declare it as the standard namespace and vector and the data type of integer or whatever you want to do maybe it'll be floats or maybe it'll be a class that you defined and so it's always important to remember that these data types can be from classes and structs that you define um, too but we're just going to use the primitive types so full of integers and we'll call it data but this time you don't have to specify the amount to start out because it's done in just a modular way now you can so well let's just to get into it I guess so basically what you do when you want to add to it is you do a pushback and then in parentheses you put an integer like I don't know 52 and that will add it to the the data list and you can also remove them so the, the size of this is modular but they are sequential just like the this old style we were doing before of arrays so that's kind of the advantage of vectors it takes a little bit of additional time for it to do the resizing of the memory and that sort of thing when you when you push data onto it and when you remove data so the, that's kind of the, the disadvantage um, let's see here. I'm just going to go into this loop that we had before. Uh, I'll go ahead and delete all this. And, and uncomment it. And, and there we go. So, I don't know. We'll just do a pop. We'll go ahead and populate it. We'll, we'll put like 10 things in there and and instead of just signing with this i, you can't do this on a vector. What you have to do is a pushback. So it's basically, this is basically a class that's pre-built that comes with the standard of C++. And it's already optimized pretty much as, as much as it, it can be. And that's kind of the advantage of using these standard libraries is they're really nice and optimized things that are uh, well tested by the community. So they basically build a class that's made to handle any type of data and it has all these functions to help you handle the data and it's about as good as it's going to get so there's no real need for you to go in and make your own. You're probably not going to be able to do better than what has been tested over the many years. So if we go ahead and do this. Now there are a lot of different options for things you can do with this. I know I already kind of said that, but I just want to emphasize that, okay, member functions. So these are things that are built within this class. There's, of course, a constructor, a destructor, and an assigns operator, but it has to exist for you to assign. So you can assign over things that are already built, but if you're adding new ones, you have to use pushback. And you can, there's functions to access the elements. There's iterators which is a little more advanced basically for looping through it and there's functions to check the capacity and 
do things with the memory. Uh, size is the one you'll see a lot. This one just checks if it's empty or not. So you'll, you might have some logic that wants to check the size of it. And there's some modifiers here. So these are the ones that will actually change it. And you'll see clear, insert, in place, erase, push back, pop back, resize, swap. The most you mostly see a lot of push back. And if you just do a clear, it deletes everything and sets it back to zero. And I think that covers most of it. And you can do a race to a race at any certain point. Now, um, the time of these is can be relevant. Like doing a race on something in the middle it has to do quite a bit of operations to resize the memory so that it's still all aligned. Like for example, if you have, I don't know, a big, you know, like 10 different things in a row and you take the middle one out and you want the new ones to still be lined up and you basically have to realign the memory. So it does all that work. So an erase is a pretty slow operation on a vector. I mean, it's going to be faster than you, anything will realize. But if you're working with giant amounts of data and doing it, it's just something to keep in mind. So if we do this, we'll just push it back. And I don't want to say too much. I think you guys will be able to figure out the rest once we see an example or two. But if you want to just loop through one, okay, there's something cool you can do. You don't have to do this unsigned stuff or this loop like this. You can do four auto and then any variable name, I'm just going to call it A, and then a colon, and then your vector. And you can do a loop that way, and then this just loops through the entire thing. So it's sort of a magical way. So auto will pick whatever types in there. That way it just auto adjusts. And you can go through your entire array like that. But if you want to use the little element access of I, you might want to keep it just like this. And rather than 10, uh, sure, we could use 10 because we know it's 10, but if you want it to be modular, you can say data.size, which will return the size. So that will go all the way to the end. And then we could just do like a C out to see what the data is, and we should get from 0 to 9, of course. Um, data at i and yeah I guess we'll just do it like that it's you know it's gonna be the same thing I was trying to think of a way to not make it so redundant but okay so let's just run that we'll do a make run same make file as last time and there we go so that is vectors in a nutshell. If you, if you have more questions, definitely go to this. Like if we did a clear down here, or I don't know, a clear right here, data.clear, it would literally empty the vector and this wouldn't do anything. So yeah, there we go. It doesn't spit out anything because well, it fills it up, clears it, and then it tries to hit this, and it won't even go anywhere because data.size will be zero, so it won't even go into this for loop. And yeah, you can work with it as you need with any of your data types, any of your classes, if you need a list of your classes. And last thing here is I said I would talk about lists, so let's do that. Now lists are going to seem really about the same as a vector. They they work almost exactly the same in code and you can do all the same stuff and you can go look them up on here and it's the same stuff but there is a very big difference in how the data is stored. A list is what's called a what's, what's referred to as a linked list where basically the elements are not lined up so they can be scattered all over your memory and if there's a lot of them, it can really bog down your program. But if there's only a few, that's fine. 
So if it's if it's a large amount of data you're working with, you want to use a vector or an array. If it's a small amount, you want to do a list. But only if it's a small amount that changes all the time. And the reason being is lists are faster to change because you can just remove something from anywhere like the center of the the list and all it does is change the pointers so it doesn't have to realign the memory and that's the advantage of lists is they're just faster to modify but slower to iterate through since they're scattered all over memory and not lined up and that's pretty much the only difference um, there, there's probably more than that and if you want to look at more about lists you can go in here and do the same thing and you'll see it looks looks relatively the same they're gonna have the same type of, of things they got a few a few new ones but just the way it's written it's written faster because of that memory stuff I mentioned well, that's gonna do it for this episode hope you enjoyed hope you learned something and are getting used to those data types as you're going along and doing your projects so I'll see you in the next episode keep it keep coding keep doing your thing sorry I'm slurring I'm a little tired it's very early in the morning. I haven't finished my first cup of coffee. Don't forget to give this video a, a thumbs up and, you know, some support stuff that would help a lot. And uh, keep it real, guys.